Hi hey everyone, welcome and thanks for joining us today. As mentioned, I'm Catherine Mayer. I'm the Benefits Editor at HR Executive Magazine, uh, and I'll be the moderator during today's event. Open enrollment is always vital for employers and employees, but it's taken on enormous importance in 2020. For many, the pandemic has increased the importance and value of employee benefits, which is making enrollment more important than ever. I'm really looking forward to digging into this topic today with HSA Bank. I'd like to introduce our speakers for today. Ed Seaver joined HSA Bank in 2017 as Senior Vice President and Director of Relationship Management. Based in Connecticut, he manages a team to effectively drive and optimize experience for customers, cultivates market-leading relationships with key partners, and maximizes knowledge sharing with business stakeholders. Ed brings a deep understanding of the employer and payer landscape, spending more than a decade with MasterCard, where he was recognized as the 2008 Global Sales Champion and 2007 Coach of the Year for Global Key Accounts. Most recently, he worked for First Data as Regional General Manager and Strategic Account Team Leader, where he oversaw a client relationship team with profit and loss responsibility. He is also the holder of two U.S. patents for inventing a new payment processing methodology, and he has majored in electrical engineering at the New Jersey Institute of Technology, Rutgers University. Our other speaker today is Heather DeRyder. Heather joined HSA Bank in 2012 and supports the servicing needs of employer clients. With 20 years of financial and benefit background, Heather, as the Senior Vice President of Relationship Management, leads a team of account executives that work with employers to enhance and promote their benefit offerings to their employees. With a strong focus on providing employers with resources and tools to help meet their benefit program goals, Heather's team leads with insight and strategy, engaging employees so they can learn about their benefits and make the best choices for themselves and their families to meet both short and long-term benefit and financial goals. HSA Bank, a division of Webster Bank NA member FDIC, empowers consumers to make the most of their healthcare dollars. With over 20 years of experience, they are a trusted leader in the consumer-directed healthcare industry, providing health benefit solutions that include health savings accounts, flexible spending accounts, health reimbursement arrangements, commuter benefits, COBRA administration, and HSA retirement solutions such as HSA Advisor Plus to 3 million members and more than 35,000 employer groups. With that being said, I'd now like to pass things over to our first presenter for today, Ed Siever. Ed? Ed, I think you might be muted. Yep, sorry about that, go. Kath. Thank you. Um, today, Heather and I will be talking about our new pandemic reality for health benefit administration, the challenges facing employers and employees today, how best to prepare for enrollment in this complicated year, best practices for reaching and engaging employees, and tips for getting the job done, including su suggested tools. Helping an employer maximize an employee maximize his or her health and wealth can be a long journey, a journey that starts before open enrollment and continues in the months beyond. It's even more important than ever to start planning early, especially since this year your enrollment activities may look different from usual. We know that 2020 was and continues to be a different year, and there will be more changes to come in 2021. So let's take a peek at what our current environment looks like so you can get an idea of what to expect. As we all know, we're in the midst of a huge pandemic. The economic impacts are not completely known yet. There's a realization that COVID is not going away anytime soon, and there is a renewed sense of apprehension and uncertainty. Along with the adjusting to radically changing norms at work, your employees may be caring for ill loved ones, or resuming their own postponed medical appointments and treatments. This may cause everyone, even those who may not have been personally affected by the pandemic, to think more about their health benefits. We know that as employers, you spend a lot of time, you spend a lot of time in previous years trying to get your employees engaged, and the driver has always been economics. 
but this year, your employees are already thinking about their health and their well-being a lot more. That's why what you do this year for open enrollment is even more important. Today, we will review a roadmap to enrollment that will help you chart a course that best suits your employees' needs, respects your need for virtual learning, and shows you how to keep benefits communications strong throughout the coming year. So the biggest new reality in our virtual reality is our virtual reality. For example, while doctor's appointments are being resumed, many of them are happening virtually through telemedicine. According to a McKinsey COVID-19 consumer survey on April 27th of this year, consumer adoption of telehealth has gone from 11% of U.S. consumers using the service in 2019 to 46% of consumers using telehealth to replace canceled healthcare visits. It's even easier than ever since now HSA qualified high deductible health plans or HDHPs may cover telehealth services before reaching the deductible. Or an, or an individual can actually choose to purchase and use telehealth services outside of their HDHP without impacting their eligibility for an HSA. This exception is valid until December 31st of this year. Additionally, virtual learning is becoming the new norm. In fact, we polled everyone who registered for this webinar and found that 59% of the employers are planning to hold their enrollment as an entirely virtual event, 4% of you as an in-person event, and 28% as a combination of both virtual and in-person. The bottom line is that every employer has a different situation with employees working remotely or still reporting on site, and being adaptable, adaptable and inclusive is key. We will touch on this later, but even if your employees are still coming into a physical workplace, you may want to consider adding virtual options this year. We know that as an employer, you probably have been busy communicating health guidelines and workplace changes. How do we pivot to communications on open enrollment and health benefits for 2021? We know people want to learn more. According to a Jellyvision survey report, 59% of employers, employees plan on paying more attention to their employee benefits in the current climate. But according to an HSA Bank 2020 Health and Wealth Index survey, 42% of those surveyed did not know if their health care plan was HSA eligible. So we have this divide. Now people are engaged, but they still aren't fully educated on what it all means. This is your opportunity to help your employees bridge this knowledge gap during your open enrollment and communications throughout the year. Just remember that what you're doing will help your employees. Open enrollment can sometimes feel like driving through uncharted terrain. Even if you're comfortable with the landscape, it's always changing. Throughout the journey, you're feeling concerns, requests, and complaints, all the while trying to navigate the obstacles and guide your group to its final destination. Only one thing is for sure. The open enrollment period is an opportunity to help employees and their families meet their health care needs and achieve a healthy financial future. And this year is a particularly important one. So with that, I'm gonna pull over and hand it over to Catherine to run a quick survey of everyone that's on this poll. Great, thanks, Ed. Um, and just a reminder for the audience, you can find the, you can answer the poll um, and just check the right side of your screen. Um, and make sure you actually do hit submit when you do answer this question. So the question is, what is the most effective way that you have found to engage with your employees regarding their health benefits? So the choices we have are in-person meetings or live webinars, recorded videos, benefits website, emails, or mailings to the home. I feel like we need a another answer that says all of the above because I think we know, you know, benefits education is often lagging among employees. Do you think that maybe as many different touches and forms of communications might be important? Do you think so, Ed? 
I couldn't agree with you more. I think that that, um, you know, is really what we're seeing in today's environment and something that we all need to be very adaptable to. Absolutely. Um, I'll be really curious, though, to see what our audience says to this survey result, to the survey yeah. question. You know, I actually think we already have um, the questions or yeah. answers in. Um, and actually, overwhelmingly, the answer is in-person meetings or live webinars. And I would tend to think that, I mean, given this year, um, it's probably more of the latter, of live webinars, given that a lot of people aren't in the office right now. Um, the next biggest uh, response we had was emails at 14%, then benefits websites, followed by recorded videos, and then mailings to the home. So what do you make of those findings? So, you know, I think it's, I think as we go back and we really read what the question says is what's the most effective way that you found, right, in the past to engage your employees. Many people, you know, as you can see, almost 70% of the people in this call felt there was in-personal, in-person meetings or live webinars. But if we think back to some of the data that we shared earlier in the presentation, where almost 60% of the people that are on this phone said they were planning to hold their enrollment in an, in an entirely virtual environment. So, you know, that naturally leads me to believe that these results are really not so much in-person meetings, but more live webinars, even though in the past, those live meetings may have been the most effective way to, to you know, engage their employees. Absolutely. Is there anything else on that list, I'm just curious, that you find especially effective in your experience? So I do, we, we have seen, um, you know, emails obviously are very impactful and we're going to talk a little later in the presentation about, you know, how to effectively email, you know, use emails to communicate um, with your employees. I was a little surprised to see that only 4% of the audience felt that recorded videos were an effective manner. Um, we've seen with some of our clients that, you know, posting pre-recorded videos or actually recordings of the, of the live webinars, right, so they then become recorded on an employee's intranet site or providing them links to, you know, here at HSA Bank. We have many um, videos that are available on YouTube has been a very effective way to get some messaging out there. So that does surprise me a little bit, but maybe in today's environment, that's going to change as we go forward. Excellent. Good to have that so, insight. Yeah. So I think with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over to um, to Heather and ask her to talk for a second about um, the way that we can prepare um, to um, prepare for the journey going forward. So let me try to pass this over to Heather. All right, thanks, Ed. So yeah, um, preparing for the journey, step one, right? So let's talk a little bit about the journey of open enrollment. How do we prepare for it? Where do we start? So we know that as you know, HR or benefit professionals, you guys are always very focused on your employees. So I think it's important that we remind you, don't forget to think about you. But it's very important that your um, physical comfort, your mental state is also, um, you know, where it should be and that you don't have a, a lot of extra stressors uh, in your environment. We know that virtual meetings can be very exhausting, uh, can take a lot out of you, uh, but so can in-person meetings, right? So we, we're going to just pay attention a little bit that the virtual meetings, it's different uh, for many of you. So it might be a little bit more um, weighing on you to make sure that you get it right, right? So we're going to give you a few tips to um, help you along that way, eliminate some of those um, small things that uh, might be getting in your way. If you're hosting um, online virtual um, meetings or webinars, 
if your phone or your computer is not going to be actually plugged in, don't forget to have your chargers handy. Um, keep them near you. Uh, having bottles of water um, near your station where you're seated and some snacks within easy reach is definitely a, a good thing to have as you are going to be talking all day. You want to make sure that you're feeling good. From a technical standpoint, it's important to think about preparing for your webinar and doing dry runs with um, anybody that you might have joining your webinar as a guest speaker. Um, work out any bugs ahead of time. You may even want to do test login sessions with some of your employees or coworkers to make sure that there's no trouble accessing your site, um, issues with microphones or um, being able to hear the presenters as they're speaking. As you're thinking about guest speakers, you know, it brings us to another topic of, um, you know, delegate. Delegate some of your, uh, the items that you want covered to your benefit vendors. Look to them for help. It should be a team effort, and your benefit vendors might be adjusting to the new virtual environment just like you are. They likely have gone through this with many employers as well, so they might have some tips and tricks or insight into what's worked for some of their other employ employer contacts, so, you know, utilize them. Um, HSA Bank, for example, as, as the HSA vendor is going to be releasing uh, a new virtual OE resource center for, for our employers. So take some of the work off of their plate. You know, they can utilize the things we've created for them already, um, tips and tricks, success stories, uh, materials for them to, you know, share with their employees so we can take some of that burden off of them. As you're scheduling your open enrollment meetings, don't forget to build in some break time. So sometimes we see the open enrollment meetings back to back, several in a day, to make sure that all of your employees can attend those sessions. Schedule some break time. Give yourself some time for some heads up time. Uh, be able to break away from your computer or your phone. Quit, get outside, use the restroom, whatever you need to do. So don't forget to take care of yourself. The next thing that you want to do is really take a look at your employee, um, your employee audience. And when it comes to consumer-driven um, healthcare, we can bucket your employees into really one of three categories. So you'll have your spenders, right? Your spenders are the ones who uh, are the ones who are putting the money into their HSA and then you know not leaving it there long because they're utilizing those funds to pay for their eligible medical expenses. So these employees are going to be looking for um, information about ways that can effectively help them manage their um, expenses and the dollars in their HSA. Your savers are going to be focused on building their HSA balances. So they, they are the ones that who are not relying on their HSA to pay for their current medical expenses. What they're looking for are tools to track their expenses that aren't paid from their HSA right away so that they can um, easier reimburse themselves at a later time um, should those funds be needed. And then you have your investors. Your investors, while like savers, you know, they are interested in growing their HSA savings over time, and they're looking for information about tools that they can use to invest their HSA dollars. So while we can categorize uh, your employees into one of these three buckets, you know, we all have the same roadmap for enrollment, but your employees are really going to take their own personal path when it comes to their health savings and healthcare decision making um, choices. So when you're reviewing your employee demographics, um, you can better customize your communication strategy uh, and keep their specific needs front and center. The, looking at your um, employee demographics is, is important. You'll hear us talk about that a lot today as we move through the presentation. Gearing your, the content of your communication towards your audience is going to help them retain more information, understand their benefits a little bit better, um, and, and utilize and engage them based on what they're used to. So look at your employee population. Do you have a lot of baby boomers? Do you have millennials? Do you have Gen Z? 
Um, we put a Gen Z as an example up here. These are the, um, you know, your employees who grew up in the Fitbit era, right? They're used to using technology to track health and wealth, um, track their finances. Uh, and so th things that might be more helpful to them would be uh, maybe gamifying their education around health and wealth versus just sharing uh, brochures or flyers for them to read through. Um, interactive calculators and online education is going to be another great option if you have a large uh, employee population um, in this generation. So the takeaway of all of this really is to um, meet your audience on the terms that would engage them the best. So in, in summary, in this section, you know, we want to make sure that you're setting goals. Set goals for your open enrollment period. If you have a window of time that the employees are able to go in to elect their benefits, maybe you have a goal in mind that you want to see X percent of them enrolled by a certain date. And review how you're doing often. If you aren't meeting the goal that you expected, maybe it's time to throw in some additional communication, some additional updates to them or reminders that their um, open enrollment timeframe will close on a certain day. Communicate as often as necessary. And then track the success so you can adjust your strategy along the way. Um, if you have the ability to track click-through rates on your online content, that might help you understand where the employees are navigating to more. And if you feel like there's a useful piece of information out there that they're not utilizing, you may want to add in a communication about that or draw their attention specifically to it. So with that, um, Ed, I think I'm going to pass the ball over to you so you can talk a little bit more about getting organized. Great. Thanks, Heather. So, you know, as we map our route going forward, we want to give your, you, you want to give yourself plenty of time to map that route and to get organized for open enrollment throughout this year. Some of the biggest things that, we, that we've learned is, is that, first of all, if you're new to offering a consumer-directed health care account this year, you may want to initiate communications about the availability of that offering even before hosting a virtual benefits fair or virtual open mm -hmm. enrollment. For many of your employees, this may be the first time that they're learning about a CDH benefits. For others, may have heard about it, but do not fully understand how it works for them. So we like to say, teach, don't preach. You can initiate communications about the availability of CDH well-being well in advance before an online or in-person benefits fair or open enrollment. Share information on why high deductible health plans and health savings accounts are being offered and how employees can benefit from making a switch, including lower premiums, investment options, and greater control over their health care finances. Consider having the initial announcement come from company executives to highlight it, its importance, but just remember, keep the messaging simple. So how do you roll out these communications? We recommend planning a virtual kickoff event around enrollment for your employees. Offering virtual enrollment can help with cost savings down the road, offers, offers a way to engage your employee's spouse or partner in the decision-making process, and can give employees the opportunity to learn more about benefit options at the time that works best for them. And in our current situation, where parents may be working from home while also assisting kids with virtual learning, work deadlines are increasing, and employees could also be caring for sick loved ones flexibility in accessing benefits information can be key. Two, make sure you incorporate your company's brand and identity, including your company logo, colors, and slogan, slogans to inspire stability and consistency. Also, think about your employees' interests and consider weaving them into the kickoff theme. Your virtual kickoff could be a video, an email, or even a live webinar. Feature insights, a personal quote, or a video message from company executives to highlight the importance of open enrollment. And then three, communicate and keep communicating. Tee up open enrollment with communications prior to open enrollment with a letter, email, or text message about the upcoming enrollment period. Include benefits updates in your newsletters and set a regular cadence of communications so your employees can get accustomed to engaging about their health benefits year-round. 
organizing informational materials on a digital platform or on your company's intranet is also important. Check to make sure that your employees can view, view easily no matter what device they're using, for example, a laptop, phone, or tablet. Make sure that your site is easy to navigate and employees know where to go with questions and for additional resources. If you can, consider offering a chat box. Unlike live chat, the chat box doesn't require a real person who's available 24 hours a day. Instead, employees can chat, can chat questions to the bot, which then automatically directs them to resources depending on their answers. Another option is an online form where employees can submit questions, but just be sure that you respond within one or two business days. One tip we found from our employers that we work with is to ask your employees to opt into text and then use this as an effective channel to build up to build up to open enrollment and to continue to generate buzz and to keep health benefits top of mind. If you're one of the many employers looking to plan for a virtual enrollment this year, and many of you said that you were planning that to do that earlier, follow these tips to set yourself up for success. One. One to two weeks before your virtual open enrollment, send reminders about the enrollment period. If your employees are not accustomed to receiving emails about their benefits, you may want to consider sending a postcard in the mail. And be sure to use communication strategies that have been proven to work best for your employees. You know them better than anybody else. Two, set up interactive virtual sessions to answer employees' questions. You can even invite, invite your benefit provider and have them attend on a webinar or provide videos or links with helpful information. If you do a virtual benefits fair, you can have your vendors in virtual booths or breakout Zoom rooms so your employees can visit with vendors and ask them questions in real time. Three, think about the hours that you will be hosting benefit meetings. Would it be better to hold meetings in the evenings after work is over? Possibly. Would employees be more engaged first time in the morning? Possibly. Is there a time when you, when you host other all-hands online meetings where you could include the benefits discussion as part of it? Or would it be better to offer recordings that would be strictly virtual and accessed at any time? Don't forget to provide contact information and or set, set up interactive virtual sessions to fo for follow-up questions. So with that, I'd like to kick it back over to Heather to talk to us about the stories of success. All right, thanks. Thanks, Ed. I think I would like to, um, at this point, um, you know, once you have your communication plans in order, spending time reviewing the materials and making sure they resonate with their audience uh, to help drive appropriate actions is, you know, probably the next step. But before we do that, I'd like to go um, into our next poll um, and turn it over to Catherine for that to get an idea of um, what we are looking at for this year. Great. Thanks, Heather. Um, again, just a reminder to answer the poll, make sure you're submitting your answer in the poll panel to the right of your screen. So our question is, are you making plan changes this year and offering new types of benefits to your employees? So simple yes or no question here. Um, and, you know, this is obviously, this is something I've been covering at HR Executive, and I'm seeing quite a bit of movement here. You know, many employers are kind of making some plan changes, offering new benefits as a result of the pandemic, um, especially things like caregiving or support for working parents, um, stuff like that. So, you know, Heather, are you hearing about movement and changes within benefits too, or, or, or maybe it depends too on industry and employer size, of course. Yeah, I think uh, it'll be interesting to see what we have for answers here. So. Okay, so it looks like the poll is in and majority are not making, making changes. This is something that we had surveyed on um, earlier in the year. Um, shortly after the pandemic hit, we surveyed a group of employers to ask them if they thought 
what was going on uh, in the environment was going to drive changes, and uh, majority of them said no, they, they didn't think so, or they were unsure yet at the moment. So it seems like that has carried through for the most part. Um, some of the things that we're hearing from our employers when we talk specifically about it is that maybe they were planning to make plan design changes, but decided against it, um, looking to not add any additional disruption um, to their employees, um, you know, in, in, sight, in light of everything else that was going on. So uh, I, I think I expected the poll to come back looking, looking like this. Interesting. Good to have that um, confirmation, though, and to see what, uh, what the results are, you know, months, months later. Yeah, yep. Okay, great. Thanks. So let's continue on about delivering the message. So, you know, as, our, as, as we are HR and benefit consultant, it can be a little bit overwhelming when we're faced with fielding employee concerns and questions and knowing, you know, that those items are going to come uh, and also, you know, shifting to a different way of presenting the materials. So, um, you know, hoping that we give a little bit of insight on, on this area here. So when you're looking at uh, sending out your message to your employees, again, keep your conversations simple. Um, illustrate the difference between your, the traditional health plan that you might be offering and the HSA eligible plan. Um, a good way to do that is by using side-by-side -side comparison charts. This is a great addition uh, of materials to add to your uh, open enrollment presentation and materials. If you have the uh, ability to do a virtual or online uh, interaction, the calculators and videos, again, are, are essential tools that can be shared with them. And, and it allows them to run comparisons for themselves at their convenience. So Ed had mentioned uh, before a little bit about, you know, your employees might not be the decision makers. So they may have a spouse or a partner at home who is more involved in making those healthcare decisions or financial decisions for the family. So if you can, invite them to participate in your meetings or um, ensure that your materials are, uh, you know, can be downloaded or links to videos or pre-recorded webinars can be shared with their um, significant others at home. I also want to point out too that, you know, when you're talking about the CDH offerings, um, and the health plans that you're providing, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about how the health plans work and, and what they are and the cost of them. Don't forget to talk about the HSA. So they are a crucial part of the consumer-driven health offering that you're providing to your employees. So sometimes it can kind of be an afterthought, um, but that bank account really is important in connecting all the pieces and fully utilizing the consumer-driven health plan that you are offering to your employees. Uh, individuals are going to resonate with the information you provide them in different ways, so allow them to make it personal. Engage them in different ways. So again, addressing many of the um, you know, various types of people you have in your audience, you might need a mixture of flyers, uh, educational videos, decision-making tools, or connecting them to other resources that your benefit providers might have. So giving them a, an array of ways to soak in this information and, and learn is going to be important for them to uh, really be engaged, fully understand, and even apply their own personal situation to the benefit offerings that you have and make decisions that are very specific and individual to them. Whether or not this is the first year that you're offering an HSA, it's important to understand that your employees will have all different levels of education about what an HSA is. Um, it's, don't make an assumption that your employees understand how to use it, what it is, and any of the um, eligible medical expenses that go along with the HSAs, and the rules and how they differ potentially from your FSA. Uh, as you're designing your communication plan, 
you know, as our as HR and benefit folks, we've been living and breathing this every day for a while now, right? As you're thinking about what to communicate, how to communicate. So take a step back and look at it from the eyes of your employees. Envision them receiving this message for the first time. Um, we want to make sure that they are able to understand, um, you know, they're, they're not going to be experts in, in the benefit offerings like you are. So keeping it high level, pointing out the information um, that will resonate with them most, the, the important things that they need to know is going to be key. A recommendation as you're looking at your um, health plans might be how you name them. Uh, you know, you want to be careful about if you're, you know, if you're calling your health plans very generic uh, names such as the high deductible health plan versus the traditional PPO. Or sometimes we see employers name their plans as gold, silver, bronze. We want to make sure that there's not any misrepresented benefit within uh, your plan based on the naming convention that you choose to use. So it's best to talk about and include in your communication things like the HSA eligible plan um, in order to differentiate that between your traditional PPO plan to make it clear that the HSA option is available with that type of plan and you move away from maybe some of the scarier language of high deductible or a misconception that one plan might be better than the other. As they're reviewing their health plans, it's important to help them make the best decision that they can. So you know as an HR person, you can't tell them which plan is best for them, right? Only they can tell themselves that. But what you can do is give them the tools to make an educated and informed decision. Debunk any myths about HSAs being, um, you know, only right for the young or the healthy. You want to be able to point some things out to your employees as they're going through their decision-making process. What, what should they consider when they're looking at this? So you will want to let them know, make sure to include um, or factor in your health insurance premium, that, you know, what's coming off your paycheck every, every week or every two weeks. What does your deductible look like? How much coinsurance do you pay before you reach your out-of-pocket max? What is the savings potential that comes from an HSA in regard to um, tax savings and paying for eligible medical expenses with tax-free dollars? How many times have we started an open enrollment meeting, right, and the elephant in the room comes out and says, all I want to know is what changes are you making and what's it going to cost me, right? So it's helpful to give them an example, show them. What does it look like under each plan in a worst case scenario? Factor in all of the uh, things I mentioned before that should be considered when evaluating the cost of a plan, and then give them a worksheet or an online tool that lets them plug and play their own personal situation. So the main key message about this is really allow your employees to make it personal to their situation. Uh, this will help them make the best informed decision for their, for themselves and their family and also um, help them potentially be planning for their um, health care costs later in the future and, um, you know, looking at this as a part of their retirement savings potentially. So, Ada, are you ready to cover some additional topics on engagement? I would love to. All right. So I think, you know, as we move forward, you know, it's important to stay the course. You know, employee engagement can happen year one, but it does definitely take some plan. In reality, most employees, you know, have this engagement outlook that looks somewhat like what this slide shows. It goes up and down based on whether they're seeing and hearing about their benefits and health and wealth topics. And for most employees, that means just before and during open enrollment when they're receiving information about their benefit options and how to make enrollment decisions. But once they've made their decisions and stopped rece receiving the traditional benefits education, their engagement drops again. 
The engagement loses momentum because your benefits and decisions are suddenly out of sight, out of mind. And that's problematic because all of their engagement during the open enrollment can lead them to select an HSA eligible health plan, enroll in the HSA, but by the time their account is officially open, they're no longer engaged and don't contribute. They're still missing out on the benefit. We see this with our own client base all the time. And because their engagement is inconsistent, employees never gain the confidence, confidence they need to keep building on that engagement, to keep learning about more ways to improve their health and wealth. Instead, at each open enrollment, you have to re-educate your employees on the basis of the HSA, the basic health plan terminologies, et cetera, because they haven't thought about it or utilized their previous knowledge since the last open enrollment season. It's like they're starting from scratch, never accruing, the, never you know, gaining the confidence that they need to maximize their benefits. Having better, ha having better understanding of the healthcare costs involved can help your employees make smarter healthcare decisions and feel more confident throughout the entire year. From our 2020 Health and Wealth Survey, only 42% do know what their premium is, even though the cost of monthly premium is a guaranteed expense. Educating year-round on benefits offers the opportunity for employees, employees to gain better, to better retain the knowledge and continue to make smart healthcare decisions. Communicating regularly about your HSA program doesn't have to be difficult or time-consuming. Here's what a sample calendar year communication plan might look like for building on your employees' HSA education and demonstrating the values of your HSA offering. You can see that communications can be implemented throughout the year, not just during open enrollment time. This sample plan shows both the communications we send to HSA account holders, as well as the recommended timing and topics for the HSA communications you send to your entire employee base. It's important to note that you can't just rely on your HSA administrator to do all of the communications with your employees about the benefits of their HSA because your provider can't reach your entire employee base. They can only communicate with your employees who have already opened up an HSA with them. Plus, employees trust their employer to provide them with the most reliable, relevant information. So it's important to both the employer and the administrator to offer unique communication specific to the time of the year in order to engage your employees and get them to take actions throughout the year. Important times in addition to the open enrollment cycle includes account opening, which typically takes place during the beginning of the year, tax time, mid-year when you can remind them to consider their HSA, and the end of the year to maximize contributions for that plan year. So with that, I'd like to kick it back over to Heather. All right, so where do we go from here? Now what, right? As the open enrollment comes to a close, it's a great time to reflect on the process. So, you know, we start thinking about what is it gonna look like um, after we've gone through all of, our, all of our meetings. So while everything is still fresh in your mind from open enrollment, make sure to capture as many notes as you can in the process. What worked during your open enrollment? What didn't work? What would you do differently next time? What would you make sure to include um, next year when you come around to open enrollment time again? You may also want to survey your employees about the enrollment process and the communication, get their feedback, and track their responses closely. This is a great way to determine what's working and what can be improved on and what might not be worth doing again. Sending simple, regular reminders even after enrollment is over to help keep the benefits to the top of mind for your employees is, is also important. Your employee's journey to optimizing their benefits doesn't stop once they've enrolled. As Ed mentioned, setting up a calendar of monthly and quarterly touch bases, emails, um, maybe updates to banners on your intranet site, uh, tidbits of information in your monthly or quarterly newsletter if you have them, 
throughout the year will keep your employees engaged and uh, fully utilizing the benefits that you're offering to them. If you offer other types of benefit accounts to your employees, um, just a last minute reminder here as we are closing out 2020, is think about uh, sending reminders to your employees about what they should do if they're enrolled even in your FSA plan. Reminders of, un of spending down dollars that have not been spent yet, deadlines of what, when they must be spent by, and then also think about how your FSAs grace periods or rollovers might affect the eligibility of your employees who are looking to make a switch to the uh, CDH plan this year. Do you want to start talking about that, those things now, give them enough time to uh, make any adjustments that they need to. So as we close, uh, before we open up for Q&A, just a, a quick reminder that a strong open enrollment period can easily shift into a strong year-long communication campaign that will really be there and help your employees throughout the entire year, keep their engagement uh, increasing uh, as they go through the year, not just focused during open enrollment. So at this point, I think I am going to pass uh, it over to Catherine to help us through uh, the Q&A se session. Perfect. Thanks, Heather, and thank you both. That's really great info and strategies here. I know it's going to be valuable for uh, for people listening listening in. So um, again, we are having we do have Q and A up. So if you do have a question, feel free to go on the right hand side of your screen to submit a question. Um, but the first question, this looks like a good one to start. You know, here. What goals would you recommend for groups that have passive enrollment? Do you have any tips for that? So I think many of the things that we spoke about today, you know, still hold true. You know, just because you have a, you know, a passive enrollment doesn't mean that you can't be communicating with your employee base, right? That communication may change a little bit. Um, you know, and how you do it, but it's that communication is still key as you move forward because, you know, knowledge is key. The more knowledge, we know that the more knowledge that employees have, the better decisions they make. You know, Heather had spoke earlier about doing the math. We know that the, you know, majority of employees, when you actually sit down with them and you do the math, they realize that in, in most cases that high deductible health plan paired with an HSA is really the right choice for them both, you know, providing great benefits as well as financial security. I don't know, Heather, if you have anything else, any other thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I'll just add to that that, um, you know, in a passive enrollment environment, it's very easy for your employees to say, to themselves, okay, yeah, that plan worked well for me last year. Uh, I'm not really going to give too much thought about this. And you, like, you basically check the box, right, and, and you're done. So uh, I would second that really um, grabbing their attention with examples of doing the math, making them rethink their choice um, might be a, a good thing to do this year if you're not moving from passive to um, active election. Yeah, and, and, and you know, one, and one thing that I – you know, wanted to mention earlier that I didn't is even beyond, you know, beyond that open enrollment period, as new hires come on throughout the year, it's the same process with the new hires, right? It's important to get in front of them, to provide them with the same level of insight and guidance and education, and to really help them out, right? Because we can't have, you know, in today's virtual environment, those new employees aren't able to have those same, you know, hallway conversations with their peers about their benefit structure. So it's even more important for those new hires to engage them in the process. Great, absolutely. All right, next question that's in, this is interesting. Someone is asking and saying that they have, they're looking for suggestions um, for plan names. So they said that both of their offerings are HSA eligible plans, one with a lower deductible than the other. Um, currently, they are named as high deductible and low deductible, which causes confusion. Um, any ideas or tips on that as far as uh, renaming plans? 
Um, so some examples that I've seen employers do is they will they will call um, their plans. So these are really these are really PPOs, right? It's just a PPO that is uh, compatible with an HSA plan. So you may use things like uh, and list out the deductible in the name so that there's a distinguishing factor. But um, HSA PPO 1350, HSA PPO 1500, or whatever your you know deductible amounts are. So there's distinction, but doesn't really sway into uh, you know, high and low might give the, oh, I better go low, right? But there must be better, better benefits under that one. So I think just keep it general. Um, a lot of times people will take the, especially if you're offering two high deductible health plans, um, you could put the deductible within the name, but distinguish in there maybe HSA eligible plan one, HSA eligible plan two um, is a little bit more generic than um, segregating. And, and the other thing that we've seen some employers be successful with is to remove the, remove the word high, right? Uh, uh, you know, take away that connotation that it's, there's a high deductible tied to it, and it makes many of the employees feel more at ease of taking that type of a plan design. Yeah, those are really good suggestions. Great. Another question that's come in, what do you think of HSAs as a retirement planning vehicle? Can employees choose funds to invest it with an HSA? What are your thoughts there? So the, the, the quick answer to this is absolutely, right? I mean, that's the whole value of having a high deductible health plan paired with an HSA is because you're providing your employees with still that same level of quality care for them and their families, but you're also providing them a triple tax advantage account that they can use to save for their long-term health care. And we know that that is the biggest challenge that, you know, we all face, right, regardless of what our age is. But, you know, in today's environment, the cost of long-term health care into retirement is daunting for many people. And utilizing your HSA, maxing out your contributions, investing the dollars. At HSA Bank, we offer a variety of investments across two different platforms is key to, to, to you know, taking full advantage of what the HSA has to offer. I don't know, Heather, if you have anything else? Yeah, nothing else on that one. I think I agree with you. Super, super important. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Uh, another question that's come in, was asking about, are HSAs ever taxed? Meaning when used for payment, will it be taxed at that time? You want to take that one, Heather, or you want me to? Yeah, no, I can. So um, the, the benefits of the HSA being triple tax advantaged, um, you know, and I will disclose that there are some states who uh, do still apply the, the tax on the funds you contribute, right? So know, know what state you're, you're in if that applies to you. But in general, the funds go into the account tax-free. Uh, they sit in there tax-free. And as long as you are using them for eligible medical expenses, it's tax-free. Now, after you reach um, age 55 and you use the funds for anything other than eligible medical expenses, you would pay the tax on those distributions um, if you don't have receipts to show that they, they were um, used to reimburse or pay for eligible medical expenses. So a little bit of yes and no in there. If you're using the funds for your eligible medical expenses, no, they are not taxed. Perfect. Uh, great information for people to know about that. And I think we have time for one more question. Um, and let's go with, how have you seen decision support tools successfully woven into open enrollment? Um, so that's the last question. And again, if you have anything else to share at the end, any contact inf information or anything, please feel free to do so as well. Great. So yeah, so. 
we definitely see decision support. You know, Heather earlier in the presentations called it doing the math, you know, crucial, you know, to this process. And, you know, at HSA Bank, we actually have a variety of partners that, you know, provide decision support tools. We also have a calculator that's available on our site that employees can use. And, you know, it's one thing to build the awareness with your employee base that it's available to, in many cases, provide examples, right, to show them, like, Joe and Sally both did the math, and here's how it came out different for, for both of them, encourages employees to think about it. And in three, we've also seen some employers go so far as to provide an incentive for their employees to go through that process. And we think that that's really important because getting, in, getting your employee into the right plan we know will lead to employee satisfaction, it leads to lower turnover, it leads to a more engaged employee, and for a lot of the people on this phone, it means that less people are walking into your office complaining about the process, right, because they feel happy with what they've chosen because it's the right thing for them. I don't know, Heather, if you had anything else you wanted to add? Yeah, um, just real quick to that. Um, some of the decision support vendors that, you know, we've talked to, they'll actually report that um, people who use a decision support tool or a model within some sort of template or worksheet, um, you know, those members are two to three times more likely to choose the plan with the lower cost. So it's definitely important to teach them how to do the math, show them, give them examples. So completely on, on board with that very important piece of your education. All right, perfect. Well, I just want to thank both of you so much for this great presentation. Um, and I want to also tell everyone on the line, too, that this webinar is being recorded and a PDF version of the presentation will be available on our website, hrexecutive.com, within 48 hours. So thanks again to Ed and Heather of HSA Bank. And have a great day, everyone. Great. Thank you very much to you, Catherine, to the entire team at HR Executive, to my team here at HSR, HSA Bank, and more importantly, to everyone that joined us on the phone today. As Catherine mentioned, on the screen, you can download the, um, this, this presentation, and then you could also feel free to email either myself or Heather with any direct questions that you may have. So with that, I want to thank everybody and hope you all have a great day and stay safe out there.